What's up, guys? Welcome to episode number 151 of the Always Race Day podcast presented by the Carl Auto Group. I'm Connor Ferguson here with Damon Helgevold and Caleb Sloha. Did I get it right, Caleb? Okay, Caleb's in a nodding mood today, which is when the audience... Thank you. Well, you may... I, uh, <clears throat> I wasn't prepared yet. I had to go find the mute button. Oh, you're all good. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, big shout out to the Carl Auto Group uh, for being our presenting sponsor. Uh, they present kind of everything we do at Always Race Day, and uh, we're proud uh, that they came on at the start of this year, and um, or I guess last year. Um, but saying for the time they've uh, been on and support us, we uh, really appreciate them. And uh, if you're looking for a car, look no further than the Car Auto Group. Appreciate uh, them for doing that. Um, so we have some asphalt stuff to get into. And I want to start with just the sole. This is all I want to say. Texas Motor Speedway blows. Well, it depends on the context that you're talking about. If you're yeah, talking about you got to have the next gen car in there, yeah. and you throw the five fifty well, in there. Here's the thing: you're you're going to start off with saying Texas blows, but I have a good feeling later in this podcast you're going to be real upset about Texas and like. <laughs> I am. I'm very upset that IndyCar's not going back. I'm fucking pissed. It's it was a top five race this year. It's a top five race last year, especially if I just secluded that to just asphalt races i picked my top five any car yeah. texas would be cemented in there for 2022 and 2023 but i'll rant about that later um watching kyle larson of all drivers get his car wrecked by air is the most asinine damn thing but if you're you have to like take into account these guys skill levels and if you're a cup driver you got to have at least a little bit of skill and if you have a resume like Kyle Larson's, I'm inclined to say you're the best one in the damn series. And for him to be taken out by air is so ridiculous to me. I don't know how in the world anyone would ever justify taking this car back to that track without making or trying to make at least something of a change because there is nothing of that race that I want to see back this season or next season. Well, it's crazy, too, because even Larson said, like, he wasn't expecting that to happen. He goes, we haven't seen that, uh, you know, as bad as in the years past. So uh, he was definitely surprised by it. I would assume Bubba was probably surprised by it, too. If you go on Facebook, you know, Bubba did it on purpose and uh, <laughs> just knew exactly what he was doing. But, uh, you know, they they were pretty surprised that that happened, and it was just yeah, we, we got to be able to have close, tight racing without the car just coming around on you. Yeah. So think about oh. like, uh, you think about to a place like Charlotte or Kansas and they go off into, into turns one and two and come back side by side there. And we didn't see it at all. Like we didn't see bobbles out of cars, let alone a car completely losing the air. Bubba did it the next restart himself. That's basically what lost him the race was the exact same thing, except he was put on the high side and it just he had gotten up too high because he would was on the high side of Byron, who lost it a little bit himself. Like just so much, so much of the air, and that shouldn't air should not win or lose you a race. In my whole opinion, the air should not win or lose you a race. Joey Logano proved that at Kansas. Uh, that you could air block back in the old car, and now you're seeing that you can spin somebody out strictly by being on their door. Damon, was that the episode where I tried to banish us mentioning the package for the rest of time on our show because of how bad it was? I think so. Well, we got new, we're, I think so. We're almost two years into a new car, and we have the same damn problems we had before. Not all of them. And I will say, say some things yeah. got better, some things got worse, but holy shit, does that not put it full circle to you guys? I just, I'm so done on this car, man. I I feel like I've given them plenty of time, um, but me as a fan, I'm, I'm tired of the BS that comes with um, whatever this air is affecting cars and taking people out on a whim and being able to air block. If just, if you just said like, I guarantee you no racetrack will see arrow blocking for the 2024 season. I wouldn't complain. That's there's your objective. That's the one thing I want. Can I just, can I just say, I told you so with this car. <sighs> Damon, I, you always say, I told you so. And I never listen the first time. So. What's crazy to I me. So like <laughs> in, 
in racing, aerodynamics is a thing. Like, that's not something we're ever going to get rid of. But the, the crazy thing to me is, like, Xfinity puts on great racing nine out of ten times, and you never – hear the announcers sit and talk about, oh, he's going to go take his line away, or, oh, he's arrow blocking him, or, oh, he, you know, just got the arrow. Like, it's... it's you can't. Well, not- you can't arrow block in those cars because they design them like stock cars, like the old... I mean, I, I know we went futuristic. It's, it's I know crazy. what they were shooting for, but the issues still exist. Go yeah, ahead. and it's crazy in Cup. Like, that's, that's everything. Like, every weekend, we, that's a major component. And... It's just crazy to me that we just can't figure out that they just need to make the Xfinity cars, you know, with big motor and some bigger tires and some other small changes and send them on their way. And if you're uh, you're really wanting to see, like, the stuff we're harping on, go watch the replay of the finish. Um, Don't pay attention to the leader. Look at Bubba Wallace trying to pass Ross Chastain for second. I know some of you are going to say you hate Ross Chastain, so you expect Bubba to pass him easy. I get what you're thinking. Ross Chastain did not do anything wrong here. He is about, I think they were going into three and four. It was clear Bubba had a run. All Ross did was his, adjust his line almost half a car length. I would wager that it was less than half a car length. And it took Bubba out. It took him like three car lengths before his car caught the same speed that Ross was going at. So you can move up half a lane and send someone back four car lengths. I think that's a negative, uh, net negative to the sport and also the car. And I hate that we're watching races come down the wire and that is an issue that can be used. I mean, at this point with, with this though, we, we could go in one of two ways. They could fix this and everybody's going to sit here and be like, Oh, this has been a great choice. Or we leave it the same way and we continue to have these same conversations. Well, we've tried doing gonna- that and we're going to have the same conversations till they change it. So and, but they, like Caleb said, why can we not go to the Xfinity car setting? We used to do this anyway. Like, look back in the early 2000s and how similar were the cup cars to, at the time, the Bush cars. Like, the body styles, the exact same. Well, how, the, you have to look like, at today. The, the only difference is, the only difference was the size of motor in the car. Like, now you can change the tires a little bit here, make them a little bit bigger, put a bigger motor in the car, do a few small things. But at the end of the day, why can't the base for the cup car come from the Xfinity car? Yeah, I I wish it was that easy. I think today you're facing, I mean, the PR backlash from going, we tried a new car and now we're just going to use the car that our AAA series uses. I think that is something they don't want to do. Um, I would also say you've been in worse PR scrambles than that. That's not well, I was gonna say, would you rather would you rather go in that direction and deal with that PR deal, but then all of a sudden your racing product is 20 times better? Yeah, and I, I get I get what you're saying. If it car. if it was up to me, logistics out, uh, I would do that, right? Um, I'm just trying to offer reasons why NASCAR likely won't do that and won't move um to that. Obviously, they have they are working on adjustments to the short track package. Um, thank you. Good job. By NASCAR, I should give them their props. Like, see, Justin yeah. Haley, so on Dale Jr.'s show that Justin Haley was on here recently, he said, had they not told me the changes that they made, he couldn't feel the changes. Yeah. That's he said the only he said that they changed the tire compound, like they brought out the tires for Goodyear and started doing the tire test. And he said the tire compound changed on it, and that's when he could actually feel. The difference was on the tire compound. It wasn't when they took the diffusers off the car. Yeah, and I, I still have to see them race to see, you know, cars behave differently in packs and out of packs and on race day and off race day. So, you know, whatever those differences are, I hope they make a difference, and I, I hope we see an improved product. Obviously, we all want to see that. So, um, that being said, let's talk about the uh, Texas race that. You know, Kyle Larson should have won, and then at some point, Bubba Wallace should have won. And uh, William Byron ends up going to victory lane, capturing the 300th win uh, for Hendrick Motorsports. Um, first guy to punch his ticket into the round of eight. 
uh, I don't want to do the debate on if William Byron got lucky. He was in the right spot at the right time, took advantage of it, got a sixth win for the 24 car. He's That car hasn't had seven wins since the turn of the century. Um, so he has a chance to set a record and really, really make a statement. He already has done so. Um, but he, man, good for William Byron. Which is so crazy because does it feel like he has that many wins this season? Yeah, because anytime, anytime someone has been really close to winning a race, and usually it's been Larson, it's like, oh, Byron won instead. So yeah, and I guess maybe, in the race and Byron emerged. And maybe that's why it doesn't feel like he's got that many because he hasn't like done a whole lot of like dominating and leading. It's just been picking them off right at the end. So. Uh, yeah, I like if you would have came to me before this weekend and been like, how many wins does Byron have? I probably would have told you like three, four, but it's, you know, crazy that it's it's been that that many already. But that's kind of what he does. He just kind of shows up at the end and, uh, you know, capitalizes. And if that's what him and his crew chief are good at, then, you know, it could possibly come down to a Okay, we, we've lost Caleb completely. I think we've lost Damon. I might be the only one.